If you're like me, putting in the time and effort to learn something that has no demand is just painful. With so many skills to pick up, we have to prioritize to pick up the ones that are the most fun, but also give the most career opportunities. So what are the most important skills for data engineers? To help figure this out, I scanned through some thousands of data engineering job postings to see what was being asked for. As always, I have a caveat. Job postings are a bit all over the place and inconsistent, so checking for keywords isn't always reliable. And sometimes postings just contradict themselves or ask for everything they can think of. Another challenge is sometimes specific tools are called out and sometimes they mention the broader skill set. But it's still a good way to stitch together what exactly is in demand and what keywords you might want to be putting in your resume. Let's start with our big three cloud platforms. Azure came in with 66% of the postings, while AWS only came up in 42% and GCP in 33%. This is interesting because AWS has 33% market share to Azure's 22%. My best guess for this, reading through a lot of the postings, is if someone is using GCP or Azure, they explicitly state just that platform. But on AWS platforms, they often have a line that's like experience in cloud providers such as AWS, Azure, or GCP. I'd still say learning any platform you have best access to is fine, and trying all three is the best. But clearly Azure has a lot of opportunity right now. For languages, no surprise here, we have SQL showing up in 88% and Python in 87%. Okay, it's kind of a surprise, because who are the 12% posting a data job and not mentioning SQL? But either way, this backs up the common advice to learn SQL and Python first. Also to note, Scala was in 33% of the posting, so if you really get into programming and want to pick up Scala, there's a good chunk of jobs there and they tend to be more software engineering focused. So that's a route you can focus on. Now let's take a look at data skills. Interestingly, data warehousing only shows up in 5% and data lake in 2%, with Kimball, dimensional, and modeling only showing up in 0.07%, 0.85%, and 8.7%. NoSQL comes in in 6%, and ETL came up in a very low 33% of postings. My best explanation here is it's a case of too many keywords. While I'm sure data warehouses and data lakes are still very important, they're probably using names of specific ones. I'm still surprised that ETL only came in 33% though. Even if you're naming one of the many tools available, I feel like you should use the word ETL in your data engineering posting. Let's get into some common subdivisions of data engineering, starting with big data. We've got 24% Hadoop. Good job, Hadoop, still holding strong. MapReduce only in 1.3%, not too surprising. And this validates the use of Spark with 29% as the primary processing framework for big data now. So it seems like learning HDFS and Spark is the way to do it if you wanna focus on big data. This might be the most surprising. Airflow only had 1.8% and orchestration had 2.8%. I feel like I had to have overlooked some keywords for specific tools here because how are there so many data engineering postings not highlighting the importance of pipeline orchestration? I think most people would put learning orchestration pretty high on the skills list, so do what you will with this information. For streaming data, this one was a little hard because of inconsistent tool names, but streaming came up in 3%, and then 27% for Kafka, 3% for Event Hub and PubSub, so maybe around 30% of postings seem interested in streaming data. This matches what I would expect. But unfortunately, unlike the big data skill set, it's not quite as clear what to focus on. And then we have reporting. Power BI shows up in 77%, Tableau in 53% which does back up my usual suggestion that while data engineers don't do a lot of reporting, it's often expected that you know it well enough to support it. For our DevOps skills, unsurprisingly, DevOps pops up in 73% of posting. Everybody loves DevOps, or at least throwing it out as a buzzword, because only 9.3% mention Git. I'm hoping this is just such a common component that they forgot to add it. Kubernetes shows up in 47%, which seems like a lot, but again, I'm wondering if it's more buzzword because most of them don't go into detail about how or why Kubernetes is being used, especially since Docker only shows up in 7.7%. Everybody just loves saying Kubernetes. And last, we have Terraform with 30%, which is probably a realistic amount of data engineering jobs that do a lot of infrastructure work. Now, what types of jobs are these? We've got 55% coming up as on-site, 21% remote, and 26% hybrid. I'm sad that there are so many on-site for a role that has no reason not to be hybrid, 
As for the levels, we've got 3% intern, 27% junior, 57% senior, and 1.6% management. Which isn't too surprising, it seems the jobs skew a bit too much towards senior levels. Be sure to give this video a like if you found the analysis useful, and if you want more of a breakdown of some of these job postings and what to look out for with these skills, be sure to watch this video next.